All right, I think we can go ahead and get started here. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Eric Hummer with the Control System Integrators Association, and I would like to welcome everyone to today's CSI Partner Webinar Series entitled Cloak and Secure Your Critical Infrastructure, ICS, and SCADA Systems. Now, CSI is pleased to co-sponsor this educational webinar with Tempered Networks, a CSI partner member. Now, this is part of an ongoing partner webinar series, and to learn more, visit www.controlsys.org, where you'll be able to find a recording of today's presentation and learn more about upcoming webinars. Now, we are grateful for Tempered Network's support of CSIA, particularly providing this technical education webinar to the system integration and end user community. Now, the vision and mission of CSIA, for those of you who aren't familiar with us, um, was that we are the only trade association focused on advancing these to ensure that manufacturing and process industries everywhere have access to low risk, safe, and successful application of automation technology. Now to accomplish this, CSI supports system integrator companies in becoming better businesses. We offer guidance to improve your effectiveness with our best practices and benchmarks manual, an open forum to connect and learn from other companies, and opportunities to market within the industry. Now as you continue to improve your management skills, you begin to work towards becoming CSIA certified, an industry standard in business excellence. Now, the value of CSA membership uh, offers you access to resources needed to accomplish this. These benefits include networking opportunities at the annual executive conference, marketing toolkits, educational materials, and the industrial automation exchange. This is an online resource that connects system integrators, industry suppliers, and manufacturers and process companies together in one convenient location. Now, these are just a few examples of how CSA can improve your business with CSI certification being the recognized seal of approval. Now, CSI certification demonstrates commitments to meeting the highest standards for integrator business and management. Successful system integration businesses combine technical proficiency with sound business practices. And what does this mean for tempered networks? Now, CSI certification focuses on business practices whereas Tempered Network's training focuses on technical abilities and security. Now, end-user clients will recognize your commitment to industry standards and business acumen when they see that you are CSIA certified. Certification also increases the probability of Tempered Network's products being well represented and greatly reduces the risk of project failure. Now, thanks again for your attending, and now I'd like to hand it over to David Mattis, co-founder and CTO of Tempered Networks. Thanks, Eric, and thanks to the CSIA, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. I'm here to talk to you about cloaking and securing your critical infrastructure, industrial control, and SCADA systems. How to build security into your industrial internet. At Tempered Networks, we've been working on this general class of problems for over 10 years. We started as research and development at the Boeing Company as the manufacturing environment was transitioning their systems to more and more connectivity. As this technology was adopted and scaled within the company, a core group of engineers commercialized this technology in April 2012 as Asgard Networks. Last year, we joined forces with a seasoned team of, of management from F5 Networks in order to bring this mix of industrial network expertise and enterprise security and high availability together in order to serve critical industry segments throughout North America. We are headquartered in Seattle, Washington. Industrial systems have in the past been air-gapped using an alphabet soup of industrial protocols. As these have converged on IP and TCP IP networks, we now have a serious security problem on our hands. And at the same time, attackers have realized that critical infrastructure, such as water, power, transportation, manufacturing, is the underpinnings of our society and make ripe targets for disrupting 
our way of life. And we have a duty to protect this infrastructure, but the costs to do so are escalating. And the methods we have at our disposal don't seem to be working very well. And I'm in discussions every day with CISOs and IT executives trying to solve these problems. And they're, they're echoing this same sentiment. We are under attack and we have some serious problems on our hands. You see, critical infrastructure is now seen as a ripe target and the soft underbelly of our society. And consequently, anyone with an, any agenda is targeting ICS. But we also have to protect ourselves from insider incidents, whether those are happening through accidents or errors and omissions, because of the, the tools at our disposal are poor fit for these environments and the complexity of our networks has grown out of control. Now, as we probably know, industrial control systems products are vulnerable, vulnerable by design. And we're all just kind of left to deal with that as we converge these systems into larger and larger networks. There are a lot of forces at work shaping this security crisis. And the operational realities of industrial control systems don't help. There's such an emphasis on availability and robustness over a long product life cycle that security has often been left as an exercise for the reader with poor or no attempts to build it in. And the ability of attackers to search and destroy critical infrastructure has never been greater. Online websites like Shodan index all the industrial automation systems that are visible on the internet and make these things available to anybody who would do these harm. A project released last year disclosed over two million industrial automation systems exposed on the internet. And just as Shodan is doing this on the internet, malware is penetrating enterprise networks and conducting similar kind of reconnaissance for, for attack within our corporate and industrial networks. Unfortunately, we hardly hear about the incidents that are most certainly taking place throughout industry. However, there have been some recently disclosed events worth discussing. The Havex malware dis discovered last year targets OPC communications on Windows through compromised vendor firmware. And a German steel mill was, uh, the blast furnace was damaged beyond repair as an attack penetrated the corporate network, pivoted into the production network, and then was able to, to do its damage. These things are very real and they're happening despite perimeter security defenses and, the, and modern IT uh, approaches to security. We have to do better. We have to make this critical infrastructure disappear. The attacks are greatly simplified by the disorganized state of our ICS networks today. We have a hard time maintaining structure and simplicity in these networks because they tend to evolve over time as requirements change, and people change, products change, business changes, and so on. How can we add structure here in an ideal world, we would have the appropriate levels of integration with the right parts of the business. This integration would happen in a way that leverages the existing resources and services and networks that the enterprise invests in, while also minimizing security risk and long-term operating costs. Tempered networks can help you build real networks that have these properties. Of course, anything we build, I mean, we must do that in a, the context of an evolving process of defense in depth security. Security is not a destination, it's a process. And this is my mantra, protect, detect, and respond. And I use this to guide my thinking in building systems that leverage the people, process, and technology that are available at any given enterprise. 
when we started working on these problems a decade ago, we had an opportunity to step back and hit the whiteboard. And we identified the key ingredients that would make up what today we call a well-tempered network. These existing approaches to security contain some of these attributes in different forms, but to get them all today, you end up trying to shoehorn a lot of IT products into ICS environments. And we know that that can be a very poor fit. So how can we get all of these today? As we were pioneering these new approaches at Boeing, we realized that we would not get very far by doing our work in a vacuum. And therefore, we engaged at various standards organizations in order to validate our approach and to reach consensus that what we were doing made sense across the broader industry. We worked in the International Society of Automation to come up with architectures that fit the automation environment and use cases. We worked in the IETF to ensure we were using the latest in secure communications technologies so that we could really significantly raise the bar. And we worked in the Trusted Computing Group in order to ensure that these approaches would work at scale at any organization. Together, this came up with a body of work that has been published by these standards organizations. Overall, our goal is to increase the operational integrity and availability of critical infrastructure. Our goals are shown here, and they focus around the concept of the network as a way to move traffic around, while securely isolating different users and applications from that underlying network, and to do this in a way that supports new governance models. We're particularly interested in bridging the gap between IT and OT organizations, specifically around networking and security. At the same time, anything we build must be efficient to procure and operate over the long life cycles of, these, of this critical infrastructure. And of course, it must fit into that defense in depth mantra, protect, detect, and respond. The reference architecture for the ISA 100.15 standard introduces the concept of an overlay network. This is a powerful abstraction for providing secure, protected connectivity for industrial automation components and to do so in a way that makes them disappear from the underlying untrusted network. This is accomplished through the addition of overlay network gateways that manage the connection to the untrusted network through any kind of interface to that network. That could be cellular, wired, Wi-Fi, SATCOM. And together, the overlay network gateways create a secure network connection to one another, which allows the protected devices to communicate independently of that network. The protected devices connect to the overlay network gateways through some kind of local interface connection, typically wired Ethernet, but this could also be serial or some other kind of industrial automation protocol. A key, a key property of these overlay network gateways is that they have a coordination interface that can connect through a scalable orchestration engine to centrally manage the full life cycle of these overlay networks, the overlay network gateways, the connections to the untrusted network, and the protected devices. So how can we look at these environments as a whole in order to provide protected communications for vulnerable industrial control systems over any network, any topology, any infrastructure while cloaking these protected devices from view. Here is another view of an overlay network, this time with Tempered Network's commercial components shown here as the HIP switch for the overlay network gateway and the HIP switch conductor as the scalable orchestration engine. And again, we're showing distributed automation systems connecting into the HIP switches through some kind of local interface, again, typically Ethernet, and the HIP switches 
also connect into the underlying untrusted network. Some HIP switches are connecting to cellular networks and some to enterprise, different enterprise networks. Together, the HIP switches establish secure communications with each other over those underlying networks in order to create an overlay network that allows these protected devices to communicate in highly constrained ways. So we can have the historian and the SCADA each communicating with the PLCs, but, not, but no additional communications are allowed. These communications can be restricted to the port and protocol level, they can be monitored, and diagnostics can be performed at any layer of this environment through the HIP switch conductor. A key innovation that we're bringing to market is the introduction of an unprecedented level of security into IP communications. We do this through the introduction of the host identity protocol into the network stack. Now typically security has been implemented at various layers of this stack. SSL happens at the application layer, Oop, pardon me, and firewalls happen at various layers here as well. And what HIP does is, is fix one of the fundamental problems that have plagued the internet. It's the dual use of the IP address at both the network layer and at the upper layers of the stack. And host identity protocol introduces a cryptographic identity in place of those IP addresses at the upper layers of the stack without breaking backward compatibility and translates those, IP, those cryptographic identities into IP addresses for delivery over the network. At the same time, HIP takes anything that comes from the upper layers of the stack and encrypts that for delivery over that network. Now this may, and this is a, this is a hard problem to solve, and it was introduced uh, over a, uh, 15 years ago by the tele telecommunications providers and uh, by companies like Boeing for the military in order to solve the security problems inherent in TCP IP communications. When you introduce these cryptographic identities into the communications layer, however, you, you have another problem with how to coordinate the trust relationships and the network rendezvous around these host identity protocol communications. The, a key innovation is, is solving that coordination problem through the use of orchestration using a trusted computing group protocol called IFMAP, which is kind of like social networking for network security. It's a graph-based model that allows the appropriate entities to obtain just the needed information about their peers in order to facilitate and monitor secure communications. Now this is, a, this is a depiction of the host identity protocol embedded within a stack. But in today's legacy environments, we have to package the host identity protocol into a standalone overlay network gateway that can sit adjacent to industrial automation equipment in order to protect and cloak it. And that's exactly what we've done. We've taken the upper layers of that stack that we've shown and connected to a remote, remote components of it through local interface connections. And here's a solution overview that shows the placement of these commercial components within an environment. The HIP switches connect to some underlying untrusted or shared network infrastructure. And this could be any network. This can be cellular, this could be enterprise networks, it could be a process VLAN, an existing control network with existing firewalls and VLANs and VPNs. We work transparently with all these existing security solutions. And the HIP switches connect to the underlying untrusted network, and each HIP switch has a unique cryptographic identity embedded within it. And the conductor is used to orchestrate those trust relationships and the configurations of the protected devices behind each HIP switch. The conductor has a a, an intuitive web-based user interface called Simple Connect that allows central management of these overlay networks. 
and again, what, what's happening is that users are defining the connectivity they're looking for, such as allowing this uh, HMI to obtain its screens from this web server and to allow this SCADA and historian to pull data off of this PLC. When we define our communications based on our operational requirements, we're at the same time reducing our attack surface to the absolute minimum since only the allowed communications can occur. This is network whitelisting or network segmentation. And all these communications between the protected devices are invisible from anything, any attacker on the untrusted network. There is simply no way for an attacker on this network to gain access past these HIP switches because they lack a trusted cryptographic identity. Another key innovation by Tempered Networks is making it possible for organizations to deploy security technology in a new way. We've made it possible for operations groups to have local administrative control over their private network environments. This allows IT to deliver a solution as an internal service offering while retaining the appropriate level of governance and oversight. So we make it possible for operations to have their own private network environments and to control the configuration within those networks. Operations is the organization that best knows what their environment, how their environment needs to communicate and what the configuration changes are going to be required in order to support ongoing business requirements. Operations needs that visibility of their environment, their configuration, and the underlying networks. And the overlay network model provides that appropriate level of visibility and control. At the same time, IT has a network to operate. And they have their, their very clear responsibilities around the delivery of that service. How can we give IT the appropriate level of visibility into these control system environments so they can ensure that their network is being utilized in an appropriate fashion? but without the ability to go in and make changes to those operational networks. That's the kind of balance we're looking for, and we realize that that's going to be a spectrum across any organization. And we have to be able to draw that line in the appropriate place for, that, for, the, for each organization. But overall, what that will do is protect the corporate assets and brand while allowing this capability to be delivered at a much lower operational cost than, than other solutions. And these smaller, more constrained control systems networks actually make the environments more robust while increasing the security posture of, of all these critical systems. When we speak with our customers, the two main challenges they talk about are how to increase security and how to improve connectivity. They, they're asking for ways to isolate their machine tools from their underlying networks, for example, or how to leverage their existing WAN infrastructure in order to superimpose a layer of security on top of that and provide dynamic remote access. At the same time, Utilities are looking to, to satisfy regulatory requirements around monitoring by using publicly available third-party networks like cellular networks in order to increase the availability of their monitoring systems. So there's all these challenges around either using the existing networks we have and isolating the critical infrastructure from those networks in order to protect them, in order to make them disappear from those underlying networks, and also how to extend our automation networks into new locations. And this could be for remote access or, uh, or remote troubleshooting or predictive maintenance. We see a tremendous shift in in providing products as a service across industry. And uh, 
And as that happens, there's a tremendous need for increased connectivity into those environments. We want to be able to enable that connectivity seamlessly and really as just as a, a, a matter of conducting business without having to go through and spend a lot of resources on designing the security around that. So we have focused on enabling our customers to operationally define connectivity while making their critical infrastructure simply disappear from view. That means that just by using our simple connect user interface and configuring the connectivity that your systems have, it will be secure by default. And you will also get a documentation of your environment. And this will be simple to deploy and maintain at any device or scale. A key requirement is that this technology could transparently drop in to any existing network or system while leveraging the existing security systems you already have in place. This can work with your existing VLANs, VPNs, and firewalls and will efficiently enable unprecedented level of security for your systems. And we'll do this with a low total cost of ownership. Okay, let's dig into a real world use case of this technology, a real customer deployment. Here we have an industrial gas manufacturer that has remote operations on their customer premises. These plants are highly distributed throughout North America and they're highly automated processes controlled with local industrial control systems. They have some level of monitoring in place and they, they, they're required to monitor these, these, plant, these remote plants as part of their service level agreements with their customer. And their connectivity solution was needed to be deployed across a mix of environments, harsh environments, um, existing infrastructure, new, new systems being deployed. Um, and, and at the same time, they needed to be able to upgrade their legacy dial-up systems to IP-based communications in order to enhance the way they're monitoring this, this, these systems. Plus, dial-up connectivity is, is, is harder to get and disappearing from the marketplace. So out at all these remote locations, they have technicians with very little IT security or networking training. So this has to be a solution that can be shipped and dropped in with no or very minimal local con configuration required. And the connectivity must be restricted to just required devices. Again, these local plants could have a, have a variety of automation equi equipment. It's its own process and just specific components are collecting and aggregating information and alarm data and making that data visible to a a central operations center. Naturally, there's no need for different plants to communicate with one another or for, um, or for certain components within the plant to have, to have unrestricted connectivity beyond that. And the systems need to be isolated from the local customer environments as well. So a real, I think this is a classic challenge. It's a very common uh, situation. And this is a, a, a great application of the, of the tempered network solution. So here's what this looked like. We have HIP switches deployed in the manufacturer's customer environments. And the HIP switches can connect either through customer networks. So in some cases, the manufacturer's customers will provide a connection to the internet. Or in, in situations where there's no no connectivity provided by the by the customer, they can use our customer can use cellular enabled HIP switches that can attach to any cellular network provider. And then the HIP switches connect to the local industrial systems, to the local PLCs and alarm systems and uh, and data collection systems that are present within these these uh, remote plants. The conductor is used in order to 
create an overlay network that contains the cryptographic identities of each HIP switch together with the trust relationships that allow certain components within each remote plant to communicate with the, the systems at the central monitoring environment. So we can have just the right level of connectivity just for the applications that are provided and manage this environment over the full life cycle of this deployment. So if a HIP switch at a remote plant gets damaged or lost or stolen, it can be revoked instantly through the conductor and a replacement can be shipped and dropped in and instantly be joined in the same way to this overlay network through the orchestration engine that is contained within the conductor. Similarly, remote users, uh, remote maintenance technicians that are traveling throughout the, uh, the, the, uh, the world can connect as needed into these, into these production environments in order to perform specific troubleshooting activities. Meanwhile, all these connections can be monitored and audited for change management, uh, forensics, and any kind of uh, you know, post-processing that's needed to verify the integrity of these environments. As a result, our customer was able to deploy a solution that was easy for operations technology to deploy and manage. There is this centrally configured life, full lifecycle management of all aspects of, these, of this monitoring network. It supported other, other, other aspects such as uh, disaster recovery and redundancy. It increased the operational integrity and availability of these environments. While while the constrained connectivity minimized the exposure to an absolute minimum in order to strengthen the security posture of the organization. And overall, it resulted in a low total cost of ownership. Here are a list of resources that you can find available both on our website and through uh, best practice documents provided by industry and government organizations. The Tempered Network solution really is a revolutionary approach to adding unprecedented security into your critical infrastructure. But don't just take our word for it. Try it in your environment today. We've had an educational institution install six stations and a central system in a half a day. We can get you started in less than a day, too. This was built to be designed, installed, and maintained by anyone, especially the CSIA community. Thank you. I'd like to open this up for questions at this point. Here is a question. Have your hip switch products been independently penetration tested? What are those results or certifications? That's a great question. We, we are a security company and Tempered Networks takes the security of our products very seriously. We have, a, we have implemented a security development life cycle process here and part of that process includes regular third-party penetration testing. Um, we take the results of those findings and incorporate them into our product. Uh, to date, those, those findings have been fairly minimal. We do not have uh, security certifications around those findings as those are, uh, those are very difficult to come by. Um, there are uh, EAL certifications and FIPS certifications, but finding certifications for uh, the, the security components are hard to come by. Okay, we have some other questions. 
Oh, there we go. Oh. Hang on here. Just trying to get these questions visible. There we go. Okay. What exactly do you mean by cloaking your infrastructure? Yeah, this is a uh, this is a, a great property of the HIP switch. So the HIP switch relies on the host identity protocol for establishing secure communications with trusted peers. And so what this means is that a HIP switch will only accept communications from other HIP-enabled hosts and only from HIP hosts that have a cryptographic identity that the, that the HIP switch explicitly trusts. Now that would be hard to set up any other way besides having an orchestration engine in place that coordinates those trust relationships. So when we build these overlay networks, we're defining them in a way that, that really is focused around the connectivity of the protected systems. But what's happening under the covers is by making those connections possible, we're, we're creating a, a direct trust link between the HIP switches that are in front of these respective automation components. And since the HIP switches only allow incoming connections from trusted peers, nothing else can penetrate past the HIP switch. And also, the IP addressing of the protected systems is completely independent of how the HIP switches are communicating with one another over those untrusted shared networks. And the communications moving between HIP switches is only the encrypted host identity protocol data. And there's no visibility into those encrypted data flows about the protected device communications. Furthermore, the HIP switch contains uh, mechanisms to protect against replay, injection, denial of service, and so forth. What applications and protocols are supported by this solution? So again, the, the HIP switch is a transparent drop-in solution. It's de it was designed to cause minimal disruption while it's being installed. It's really as brief as unplugging the local protected devices and plugging them into the HIP switch and plugging the HIP switch into some untrusted network. And and the HIP and you can and in the overlay network you have an independent network environment. And so the configuration of your existing systems can be unchanged and any IP protocol can work, work through the through the overlay network. If a nefarious person were to purchase some HIP switches, could they place them on an overlay network and be recognized by the HIP switch conductor? Oh, that's a great question. So that's, in a nutshell, the problem with the browser-based SSL security model, right, is that any, any, any device with a certificate that's been signed by an authority generally has blanket trust within that umbrella. And we've moved beyond that to requiring explicit trust between HIP switches. So we're creating a white list of cryptographic identities. So if some nefarious person purchases some HIP switches, well, unless those HIP switches are explicitly trusted, by somebody who's responsible for these overlay networks, they will simply not be allowed to establish any kind of connection with any other HIP switch. Furthermore, our product supports customers installing their own keys and certificates on the HIP switches through a very simple, simple uh, set of steps within the conductor. So you can use your own keying material if you like, and certainly we have customers that do that, but we also feel very confident that the whitelist approach to trust is, is bulletproof. I like to say, 
for good reason that encryption is easy and trust is hard. And we've solved that problem through orchestration. Does the HIP infrastructure support VLAN segments behind the switch? Yes, we do. We are a VLAN compatible system and you can carve up your protected devices into different VLANs and perform various mappings of VLANs to overlay networks and vice versa. Can I place HIP switch can I place switches, routers, firewalls, etc between a HIP switch and the protected devices? Absolutely. Once again, we've designed to be a We've designed this product to be a transparent drop-in solution that works with your existing infrastructure and systems. It's very flexible in the way you can deploy this. That's why it's important for us to have very clear documented use cases about how this technology can be applied because it can be applied in so many different ways. We have a shared city network. Can we somehow manage and isolate our communications from the rest of the other departments? Yes, that's a prime uh, use case for this technology, is how to leverage shared infrastructure for different multiple users while maintaining the, the integrity of those communications and, and isolating those communications from the other users. We need to start thinking about our underlying networks as a basic service as a utility almost, just like water and power. And if we're going to, to consider network that way as just for transport, we have to figure some way to layer security on top of that. And if we think about the challenges of securing the protected environments, these critical infrastructure environments, it really makes a lot of sense to have an independent layer of security that sits between the network and the protected environment. And in this independent layer of security is where we can really practice that defense in depth mantra. We can protect, we can protect the environments, the, we can protect the critical infrastructure from the underlying network and vice versa. We can detect anomalies in communications and monitor both sides of that, of that, of those, of that environment. And we can, and we can respond. We can be flexible to changes even drastic changes on either side of that. Think about completely ripping out your underlying network infrastructure in response to some, some natural disaster. And how could you replace that quickly with any available network and not have to reconfigure your critical systems? That's a very powerful capability indeed. What is the cost of the startup package? Our starter kit is $10,000 and that will get you going in, a, in your environment and can actually be deployed into production. If a SCADA platform relies on hard-coded IP addresses, how does this play out with the HIP switches and the cryptographic identity? This is a good question. So the, the SCADA devices, the IP addressing that they are using is independent of the HIP switch. The HIP switches don't really care what IP addressing you're using. There's a local interface connection from the protected devices to the HIP switch and in the conductor the user defines what those systems are behind each, each HIP switch. Therefore, we can create a mapping between protected local protected devices and HIP switches, and then we can furthermore create these explicit trust relationships, which in essence lets us build up a routing table for how to send protected communications through this overlay network. Once we have that map, it, we let the host identity protocol do its work of, of providing a secure com communication channel for those communications to occur.
A lot of our control systems are older and no longer supported by the original vendor, and they are unpatchable. Does tempered networks protect these types of systems? Absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, we need to be looking for ways to introduce an independent layer of security into these critical environments. Because we have these systems have long life cycles, even today's modern product is tomorrow's legacy product. And so we when we're trying to extend the life cycle of these systems, we have to protect them very closely. And we do that by reducing the attack surface of those systems. Yet we still need to integrate these systems in some way. So how can we integrate them while minimizing their exposure? And that's exactly what the hip switch does. It, it creates a moat of unbreakable protection around that device. And one of the best ways you can do that is simply by making it disappear from view. Right? If nothing on the untrusted network can see your vulnerable legacy system, then it's not going to be able to communicate with it and attack it. As an example, just thinking of an example of legacy systems, we have hip switches protecting DOS systems, Windows XP systems, and, and did you know that 20% of the systems of the PCs out there are still running Windows XP despite the end of, of Microsoft support last year? Well, we have customers that have dropped in the tempered network solution into Windows XP environments in order to make those, uh, in order to extend the life cycle of those, the, uh, the lifespan of those systems. How do the HIP switches handle legacy protocols like OPC, DA, or HDA? The HIP switches handle that, those protocols transparently. So any IP communications can, can occur through the HIP switches without any modification. The HIP switches introduce very minor latency, a very minor increase in latency and jitter. So for all but the most extremely sensitive real-time applications, you can introduce a secure network connection into these, into these environments. Here's a great question. Will communications between the other HIP switches function if access to the conductor is down, such as for maintenance? Absolutely. We are, we are committed to maintaining and improving the operational availability and integrity of critical infrastructure and information. The conductor is, has a high availability deployment model so that to minimize the downtime of the conductor, but if the conductor is to become unavailable for any reason, the HIP switches all continue to function with their current known configuration, even if they power cycle. So without the conductor, you can't make configuration changes to your environment, you can't monitor the environment, but all existing functionality is maintained. Furthermore, when you deploy HIP switches in a high availability configuration, the failover will work just fine without the conductor being, of, being online as well. We do recommend that the conductor is used uh, continuously, especially for monitoring these environments, because that's a key part of, of maintaining the uptime of these environments, is understanding their state and being able to collaborate around that, and the conductor is is a great tool for doing that. What level of tech support is included with the starter package and for how long? Tempered Networks provides design assistance 
and can provide technical support at any level that you require for your environment. Please get in touch if you'd like to talk about that more. Thank you very much for your time and attention today. And we look forward to hearing from you soon.